So I'm Nancy Lobbs, and I'm going to uh, take you through several topics today. So let's take a quick look here at our agenda. So the topics today include the system settings to make your uh, user's life a little bit easier, and then also how to update your list of file, appointment, and note types. We'll also take a look at uh, maintaining your list of fields and adding them to overview cards. And then finally, finishing up with how field mappings and view layout relate to each other. So just a side note, any of these updates that I'm going to be discussing today can only be made by Bullhorn System Administrators, and you would need to be on either the corporate or the enterprise editions of Bullhorn. Now, among all the system settings, there are several that can be used to streamline workflow and even make things easier for your users. And these are the ones that I want to start with. So first of all, we have one called auto update the date available field. Um, and this would be on your candidates record when you put them out to work. We also have one that can close the job orders when placements are created. And also another to automatically log emails as notes. So I'm going to go to system settings next here uh, in Bullhorn to show you how we can uh, make some changes to these settings. So I'm just logged into my Bullhorn training account here. And then from the main menu, I'll just click on my admin folder and then open up the system settings tool. And it looks like it wants me to log in again. So let's just do that very quickly. And we'll try it once again. So while it's validating my login again, um, I wanted to mention that if your recruiters are having to spend time updating their candidate records for the date available, even though their placement lists an end date on it, there is a setting that can help with that. And I know this page can be a little bit overwhelming when you first come here because there's over 300 different system settings that you all as administrators have access to. So I usually find it quite helpful to use the filter box over there on the top left and just enter in a keyword or phrase to help me locate the setting that I need. All right, so I'm gonna filter on the keyword auto and that'll bring up a much shorter list of settings here. And the first one that I wanna look at is called the auto update candidate date available on placement. I know it's quite a long one, but you can see it right here in my list. And then by expanding that, you can basically read the description, but if you set the value here to true, then Bullhorn will automatically set the candidate's date available field to the scheduled end date that appears on that placement. Um, so as, you know, as long as they're checking that field when they're creating a placement record, this will take care of it for them. So let's go ahead and update that setting now to true. And then, of course, I would always want to save my changes. So I'll give it a quick save to update that setting. Next, if your users are having to go back and close out each individual job when they make a placement, or maybe they simply forget to do that, well, we have a setting for that too. So let me just collapse this one because the next setting is found in the same list here. Uh, it's the first one at the top, the auto close job on placement. So by expanding it, you can easily see that this setting will automatically close the job order whenever you make a placement. Now, keep in mind, this also removes it from the open source career portal. But one additional note, you would need to manually remove it from social media and any other job boards where you might have that job posted. And if the job reopens at a later date, you would need to republish the job. But I'm gonna go ahead and change this setting to true. And then again, save those changes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear the filters that I have right now on my system settings list because you can also filter this list by entity in order to find all of the system settings related to a particular entity. Um, for example, maybe any that are related to the candidate in Bullhorn. 
And this can be really helpful if you don't know what the setting is called, but you know that it's related to a certain entity. So let's try that. In the filter box, if I just type in the keyword candidate, I can hit filter, and you can easily see there's quite a long list, but all of these system settings that appear are related to the candidate record. And there's even two pages, so don't forget to check that as well because you might find what you need on a subsequent page. Now I'm gonna clear that because I'd like to take a look at at least one more setting. And this one will enable you to have outbound emails automatically logged as notes instead of having to copy and paste them into a new note screen. So again, using my filtering technique here, I'm gonna type in email note just to locate the setting and click filter. And of course, only this one variable comes up, the default email note action. So this determines the default note action that would be used when you're logging an outbound email as a note. Now you'll notice that the um, value field is blank right now, but if you enter in the word email, all the outgoing emails will track as notes automatically. So let's do that to set that up in our system. So we'll type in email and we will again save our changes. And then I'm going to just clear all of my filters that I have set and go back to the slides here for just a moment. Because while we're in system settings, I would like to show you how you can also update the types of file attachments that are included on your candidate and contact records, or even update your appointment type list, and even customize your list of note actions as well. Now, to find these settings, we're gonna go back to the system settings tool, of course, but you can search for which one you might want to update by filtering on you know, certain keywords. So let's take a look. Going back to Bullhorn here, we're still in the system settings tool. And by filtering on the word file, we could get to that file type list, or we could use the keyword schedule to find our different appointment types, or even note for our note actions. Now I'm going to start with file. So I'll just type that keyword in the filter. And the setting that I actually need here is down at the bottom of the list and it's called the file type list. So if I expand that setting, you can see that these are the different types of files that we might possibly attach to either a candidate or contact record in Bullhorn. And they include things like resumes and cover letters, copies of passports, uh, maybe even a sample of someone's work but perhaps I might also want to add a reference letter here uh, as a possible file attachment. And I wanna be able to designate that file as such. Now it's as simple as adding in a comma and then typing in the word reference here. Now, of course, if I add it at the end of the list, that's exactly where it will appear in the dropdown when you're selecting the type of file attachment that you're adding to, in this case, a candidate record. If you want it to appear anywhere else in the list, just insert the word wherever you want, like perhaps maybe after cover letter. But remember, it's just comma separated values and no spaces are required. And then be sure to save your changes. And of course you get that confirmation that the update has been made. Now I'm gonna clear that filter and this time filter on the word schedule. So this will bring up a setting called the schedule type list. And as we can see here, this gives us a list of different appointment types. So all the different reasons why we might be adding an appointment in Bullhorn. And we have options for things like a client visit or different types of interviews, including um, an internal interview or a final interview but perhaps we might want to add exit interview to the list. So again, I would do it exactly the same way, add a comma, no space, type in my appointment type, exit interview, 
and then just click the Save Changes button once again. Now I have one more that I would like to review and possibly update the list. So I'm going to clear my filter and this time type in the keyword note. Now for this one, I need the comment action list. This particular setting controls the note actions that all of your users would see when they're adding a note to any record in Bullhorn. And you can see we have quite an extensive list and they're all entered in their comma separated values. And while you know we do have uh, different types of calls like marketing calls and skill market calls and even client visits, maybe would like to add one for a BD call um, into this field because this would be used by all of our sales and our account managers uh, whenever they're logging a business development call. So I might want to include that before my um, note action for a coffee note, if we met someone for coffee. So I'm going to just type in here BD call and make sure I separate it with a comma and save my changes once again. So those are just a couple of different system settings that um, you may find helpful uh, to review your list and see if it makes sense to add any additional uh, values to any of those settings. So let me just clear my filters at this point. And I want to speak about another way that you could also be an effective administrator. And that's to maintain your list of fields and add the most important ones to your overview cards that appear on the overview tab of your different records. And I really believe that you should periodically review these fields um, to keep your records clear of any unused fields or even required fields that may no longer be necessary. So in Bullhorn, we need to go to another tool for this. So we'll click on our admin folder. And this time we're going to open up the field mappings tool. And I'd like to expand the contact entity here on the left and speak about the fact that in our application, we actually have three email address fields that are listed on the contact record. Let me just show you that before we make any changes. If I open up the contact list and just select any random contact, doesn't matter which one, I'll go with Roger here. And then if I navigate to the edit tab, usually in the uh, contact information section here, you'll find the email addresses. Now you can see we have all three fields that are available in use here, but specifically the email three field is designated as a required field. So that probably really doesn't make sense. I mean, at the most, we might have one or two email addresses for a contact. I don't really know if we need that at all. And keep in mind, fields can be marked as either required or optional, and that is done through field maps. So while I'm in the uh, contact entity here, I can use the field column header and just simply search on the email three field, and there it is. And you can readily see that it's a required field. So first of all, I want to remove that and make it optional. But if I wanted to hide the field altogether, all I need to do is select this checkbox labeled hidden to remove it from my contact screen. All right, so then all I need to do now is save my changes, just like that. Now, in order to check out our work, I would have to log out of Bullhorn and then log back in in order to see those changes take effect. And that's definitely true with any admin changes that you make in Bullhorn Novo. So I will do that in just a second. Um, let's go ahead, well, let's do it now, why not? I can just go to my username and log out and then log back in very quickly. And then we can check out our contact record for the email field. So if I 
go back to my list. We can select any contact like Ted, go to the edit tab, and then that update should have been made. And you can now see we only have the email one and the email two fields displaying on that record. Now, let me go to the overview tab of the contact record right now because adding fields to overview cards can also help your users be much more efficient and give them quick access to important information. But please remember that users cannot remove custom cards from the overview tab because these are ones that are configured by Bullhorn administrators. So you'll really want to make sure that whatever you're adding to a custom, um, custom card here is going to be relevant for all of your users. And take, for example, this general information card here. This is definitely a custom card because you'll notice there's no X off to the right. Users cannot remove this. It will always display. Now, the only field that's currently displayed on this card is the general contact comments. So perhaps we might want to include some additional fields on that card. Now to do that, we need to go back to our admin folder once again, and this time go to the view layout tool. Now, since we were looking here at the um, contact overview, let's update our field map entity to contact. And then we would need to navigate to the overview tab here. And anything that's in the include in view box, like the general contact comments, is what is currently displayed on that general information custom card, because this is where you configure all of your custom cards on the overview tab. And perhaps I might want to add the title or the contacts occupation. I simply just have to select the field, click the arrow pointing to the right to include it in view, and then again, save my changes. Now, I would also have to log out of Bullhorn and log back in in order to see those changes take effect um, yeah. and have that new field displayed on the overview uh, general information card there. So I have one last topic that I'd like to get to here today. So let's go back to the slides. And that is talking about how field mappings and view layout relate to each other. So field mappings determine what appears on the records edit screen. And this, of course, is where we go to add new fields, hide existing fields, maybe display fields that are currently hidden, and even set the sort order, which determines where that field will land on the page. Now, on the other hand, Bullhorn's view layout tool determines what appears on the cards on a records overview tab. And for fields to be available in view layout, they must be unhidden in field mappings. In other words, they have to already be displayed. And by the way, the view layout tool also controls what shows on the find results. So whenever you type into that find field to locate a specific record, and then you hit enter on your keyboard to load those results in your workspace, that tool determines the columns of information that will display for you. So let's just quickly go back to Bullhorn and show you what I mean here. I'm going to do a quick find search for a candidate like Jordan Kendall, and I just hit enter on my keyboard to load the results up here in my workspace. And in addition to the ID number associated with the candidate record and the candidate's name, there are other fields or columns of information that display here, like the status of the candidate, their title, their owner, their cell phone, etc. Now, one thing that's missing here is their email address, and perhaps I might want to add that to the view. Well, this is something that only a Bullhorn administrator could do. And I need to go back to the view layout tool to accomplish that. But right now, I'm in the contact entity, so I'm going to switch it to candidate. And then next, I'm going to click on the Fast Find tab, and I can easily move items between the Exclude From View and the Include In View boxes so that I can arrange my view to display the desired fields 
in my fast find results. And all I need to do is find the email one field over here under exclude in view. So there it is. Once I select it, I can send it over to the include in view box and then save my changes. One other thing about the view layout tool that you may not be aware of, the default columns that you see on this list tab in this first section here where it says default columns, this will determine what columns automatically appear on your list view, so in this case the candidate list, as well as on the tear sheet list view. So while I'm still here, what I'm going to do is look in my default columns here and arrange what I want included in view. Now, I already have quite a bit of information, as you can see, like the status, the owner, the source, but I might also want to include that email field. So once I select it and I click the arrow to the right, it will include it in my view here. And remember, you can always click the up arrow if you want to rearrange the order of how those columns display. And then all I need to do is hit the Save button to update those changes. And then, of course, I would need to log out of Bullhorn and log back in once again to see those updates to the Fast Find Results list, as well as the default columns that would show on my tear sheets. And I think I have time to do that. So let me just log out one more time and enter in my username and password. And we can take a quick look. All right, so if I conducted a fast find search and hit enter on my keyboard, we can take a look at the columns that display in the candidate find results. And in addition to the columns that were already there, it should include the email one field, which it does now. And then the same thing with the tear sheet list. If I open up my tear sheets and then open a tear sheet that has candidate names on it, like this developers in Boston, once I see the expanded view of my candidates, we can see that the email one field was added to this list view as well. All right, so just to kind of wrap up what we covered here today, we took a look at various admin tools that can help you to become a more effective administrator. And I want to thank you all for joining. I, I hope you found this webinar helpful. I know they go by pretty quickly, but for more information, you can check out our customer community by clicking on help and then searching on admin tools. So back to you, Sarah, because it looks like we may have a couple of questions. We do indeed. We've got five or so minutes here, so I'll, I'll ask you one or two. Our okay. first question is, uh, we have multiple private labels in Bullhorn. How do we make these changes you've discussed today? Well, that's a great question because for any admin changes, if you have multiple private labels set up in Bullhorn, you would need to make these changes separately in each private label. Um, so let's just go back to our admin folder to show you what I mean. And if we go to field mappings, for example, right here at the top is your private label drop down. Now, because this is a training account and many people use it, you can see we have quite a few private labels. Um, so the changes would have to be made separately in each if we wanted those default columns to be the same in all of our PLs. Um, now, of course, if you want to limit it to just one or the other, then you only have to make the changes uh, in the appropriate private labels. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, next question is, how can I display the email address on my contact tear sheets? That's another good question. All right, so it's basically done the same way as what we saw earlier with the candidate tear sheet list view. So this time, if we go back to our admin folder 
and open up the view layout tool, we would want to select the contact entity here and then click on our list tab. And in this default column section, we'd want to find the email one field. So for example, we would just select that, click the arrow to include that field in the include in view box and then save it. Now, of course, like any of these changes that we've been making, in Novo, you really do need to log out and log back in. So let's just take a look here one last time. And make sure our contact list displays that email one field now. So that would affect the list as well as the tear sheet view. So we'll go to tear sheets and find a tear sheet list that has some contact names on it. So this Java in Boston has quite a few. And if we look in the contact section here, we should see that it's been added. And there it is. Now, unfortunately, not all of our contacts have email addresses. So um, that really highlights for you that uh, whenever you touch a record, you know, if you learn something new, just click on their name, go to the edit tab, and make sure you populate that field with any new information because that can only help you later with searching. You know, the more information you have, the better your results will be later on. Awesome. Thanks, Nancy. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar there. We did get a bunch of questions that we don't have time to go over. For those who ask questions, just make sure to check your email in the next 24 to 36 hours. We will be following up individually with all the answers to those questions. Um, and as a reminder, we will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees within the next 24 hours. So look for that in your email as well. For any additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub that Nancy mentioned earlier. Um, go through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, all.